This is Tom Fox. I'd like to welcome you to the Compliance Week 2022 podcast series. Compliance Week is thrilled to be back 100% live and in person after three years apart. Back for its 17th year at Compliance Week National 2022, compliance, ethics, legal, and audit professionals will gain insights and make connections at the industry's premier cross-industry national compliance event offering knowledge, packed, accredited sessions, and take-home advice from the most influential leaders in the compliance community. In this podcast series, we will detail some of the speakers and what they will be discussing at the event and why they are attending Compliance Week 2022. I hope you will join me in attending this conference and particularly this year when it's literally the first major compliance conference which will be held live since the pandemic began. We link to the conference in the show notes and listeners to this podcast get a special discount which is also listed in the show notes. I hope to see you in May at Compliance Week 2022. In this episode, I visit with Lisa Fine, Senior Counsel, Director of Global Compliance at Pearson, on her presentation on adapting compliance programs to the new normal of hybrid and the remote work environment. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, back for another episode in Ethical Leadership on Ever-Changing Environment Compliance Week 2022. Today, I'm thrilled to have with me compliance superstar, Lisa Fine. Most of you knew Lisa before, but after she became one of the co-sisters of Great Women in Compliance, the Gwick sisters, she elevated to superstardom. So Lisa, I'm thrilled to have you on the podcast. Well, thank you. Not only am I so appreciative of having, you know, being on the podcast, I'm very, very appreciative of you and your support of us from the very, very beginning. Um, I don't think we've told the origin story in a few weeks, so I'm sure anyone we see at Compliance Week can say that. So thank you for that. And thank you for having me. And I'm really excited to talk about Compliance Week. So Lisa, could you tell us what your current role is? My current role is a senior counsel and director of compliance at Pearson. Pearson is um, from the largest learning, um, education and learning per, uh, uh, company in the world. And one of the things that we're doing now, which I'm really excited about, is really trying to drive development into what our workforce skills, what, what do people learn, be lifelong learners whether that's education in the traditional sense or education in skills, certifications, um, jobs, but really trying to expand that to keep moving, to evolve along with what it means to be a learner and what what we need to be successful and how to help people do that personally. So that's my company. My job is, is, is that I work in the ABC team and a lot of my role now is in investigations. I do a lot of work in investigations. I work on a lot of policies, um, have been spending a lot of time looking at codes, a lot of the general, some of the general making sure that people have all the tools they can to be um, good corporate citizens and particularly make ethical decisions. Lisa, the title of your panel is a mouthful, and I'm just going to read it. <laughs> Adapting compliance programs to the new normal of hybrid remote work environment. And I was wondering if you could uh, maybe give us a few of the highlights you want to bring to it or where you think the discussion on the panel may go. And I have to acknowledge Gwen Hassan as the moderator, uh, the host of uh, Hidden Traffic, yet another podcast on the Compliance Podcast Network. So I'm thrilled to have both of you guys on the same panel. But what do you hope to really bring to that panel? First of all, I'm so thrilled that you said that about Gwen, because this is my first time on a panel with her. And I just respect and admire her so much. Um, I think what I really am looking forward to and, and would like to talk about on the panel is, is twofold, is, is really how to address change, if it is a change for you and for your organization. Some were more remote, some were less um, before, and how to, we're now in this a few years and people may or may not be coming back to their offices. Um, and how do we basically make sure we have an ethics and compliance program that evolves along with the needs of individuals uh, that are targeted to both your organization and to, and to this change in time 
And I think another thing we want to talk a lot about is some of the change fatigue. It's been a heck of a few years. Um, so how do you help your teams internally build your program, continue being effective, and also support one another um, in all of the things that happen when remote sometimes makes people feel more alone? So those are a couple of things. I have to pick up on a phrase you use because I've not heard it before, and I think you as succinctly as possible, articulated something all of us have felt, and that's change fatigue. Uh, we've talked about supporting our coworkers. We've talked about checking in. We've talked about a variety of other strategies for either working from home or, or hybrid work. But change fatigue really encompasses all of that. Is, is that something that uh, you guys have consciously talked or thought about at Pearson? Yes, um, we really have. It, it, and I think talking about, I mean, one thing at Pearson initially is that it was always a fairly com comfortable to work from home or remote or hybrid work. Um, but that was a little different before it was mandatory and having to change the whole part of the business. And then, then between the insurrection and then, um, you know, there were just one thing after another, all the ongoing COVID and now the war in Ukraine, social justice movements. It, it, it really has been something is how do we take care of each other um, and make it, uh, you know, help us survive when the changes keep happening. Because th every time something else happens, people at this point are, are like, really, this is happening now. So as an organization, there's been a lot of work to do that, whether it's trying to keep, you know, on the pulse of, of individuals, whether different parts of you know, support in organizations. And, yeah, I'm a little biased, but, our, you know, our, our CEO it started in um, November of 2020 and spent a lot of time learning the organization. Obviously, like any CEO moves, you know, makes some changes, but always really focused on how do we best take care of ourselves as people and as an organization and do, and also talks about doing the right thing. So I think no organization is perfect, but having that both tone from the top and messaging, it doesn't stop the fatigue, but it, the recognition is huge. Lisa, for our final question, I wanted to ask you, what do you hope to get out of Compliance Week 2022? Well, the biggest part is I am just so excited to see some of the people and colleagues that are good friends of mine or people I haven't met that I've been in touch with online over this last few years of being on my own and just getting time to, to interact and the, the social networking component of it. I, I've said this, I, it's not like I can say, There's a, these are the three panels that are can't miss for me. But what I'm most thinking about is getting to talk with our community and exchange ideas and, you know, hug some people I haven't gotten to hug in a couple of years in a completely appropriate manner. Um, but I, I'm just very, very happy to see and be a part of this community that I really am so proud to be a part of and that I like so much. I, I'm so happy that Compliance Week is going to be in person. Well, Lisa, I'm thrilled as well, and I'm equally thrilled to look forward to seeing you and getting one of those hugs. So I hope our listeners will join us at Compliance Week 2022. Thanks so much. And we're, it's going to be great, I think. And plus, it's my hometown, so it's even better. So have a great day. Thanks, Tom, for including me. This is Tom Fox again. I hope you will plan to join both Lisa and myself at Compliance Week 2022. We've got a discount code for you that we've linked to in the show notes. Also, uh, additional information about Compliance Week. It's going to be the first compliance conference, full compliance conference since the pandemic. I know you will want to see all of your compliance buddies, and I would hope that uh, you and I can get together as well. So I hope you will join us at Compliance Week 2022, May 16 to 18 in Washington, D.C. I look forward to seeing you there.